Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, quick apology about the sound quality yesterday. Um, on Sunday I travelled without... No, on Saturday I travelled without my microphone lead. Reverted to the, um, the PC sound as an emergency. And then didn't realise when I plugged in the microphone again that it wouldn't automatically switch over. Dolt. So anyway, hopefully the sound is a little better today than yesterday. And hopefully you won't have to put up with it for an hour and a half as you did yesterday. That was a tough puzzle. I mean, we may get another one today, but oh, I don't know. I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping not. Now, um, this puzzle came in from Dylan D. And it's called Molly Hogan. Very, very Irish name for the puzzle. Um, and... Dylan said that he's a relatively new setter and uh, he's been posting one or two puzzles on Logic Masters Germany. Finally got one with a 95% rating and sent it to us. Um, and if we don't feature it, he'll be back when he gets a 98% rating. Well, let's see how this goes, Dylan. We may welcome you back anyway. Um, looking forward to giving it a try. I will go through the rules and everything in a minute. Uh, don't forget that on... Patreon, we have our Alice in Sudoku Land hunt by the Asylum, Monty Knox and Panthera, three fantastic Japanese sum Sudoku constructors. And uh, that really is quality offering there. Do check it out. Uh, we're getting a lot of correct entries in. Uh, we only have four days left if you want to get the shout out on the channel for getting all the puzzles right. But then there's another 10 days to get to the prize level which actually just requires you to get any three puzzles right they've set it up very cleverly so you can choose the three um that's on patreon where i believe simon may be putting up an extraordinary crossword solve he's done recently um and i can't look i haven't seen the video yet i'm really looking forward to that it's long but it's really interesting it's a really interesting puzzle um and right up Simon Street, as a matter of fact. Uh, and he he got in touch with me after doing it and said, why didn't you recommend this to me? Well, I don't know. I forgot it was right up your street, Simon. Sorry. But it's going to be very interesting. Do think about joining us on Patreon, uh, assuming that's where that goes up. Now, what else have we got going on? We've got the apps. We've got the merchandise. Check those out on the links under the video. Simon was also mentioning that he had about 18 birthdays to read out today. Or I checked. I don't think it's as many as 18. I think that was an exaggeration. But there's an awful lot of people with a birthday today. Um, it's almost as if everybody who follows the channel has a birthday every year. It seems like... There's that many. And uh, anyway, I'm going to wish my additional happy birthday greetings to all of Ashley, Jed, Jess, Carolyn, Shell, Stephen and Kathy, who uh, all got mentioned today, hopefully on Simon's video. But we are going to look at the rules of Dylan's puzzle here called Molly Hogan. And uh, interesting, there's quite a few different rules, but they're relatively simple. So normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're going to find a way to put one to nine in every row column and every three by three box oops there we go gray lines must that's these ones must read the same in each direction so they're palindromes uh, so that digit will be the same as that for instance digits along an arrow sum to the digit in the circle no need to say that they can contain repeats because in the case of the one i've highlighted they must um Grey and yellow, oh no, digits within a cage, sum to the total shown at the top left of the cage. So those three cells add up to 14. Grey and yellow cell groups are clones. The digits are the same and appear in identical order for each clone. So obviously that means if we had A there, B there and C there, those letters representing digits, we would have A, B, C in exactly the same order there. So that's how it goes. Those are the rules. Give it a try on the link under the video. I am the first one, and I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. So, well, I like a 23 cage and three cells that see each other. That has to be 986. Then the 7 must be in this 14 cage. Oh, it must be 743. They're the maximum three digits remaining. And we've managed to get a one and two in those cells without revealing the secret. Hurrah. Now, one, two, seven, five, nine. So the rest of the cells in this row 
a 3, 4, 6, and 8. And, well, first of all, some of those are on palindromes, which must have an identical digit at the other end. Second of all, this one can't be 8 or 6. Even if it was 6, the minimum here would be a 1, and the minimum here a 1 and a 2, and that would add up to 10, which is too big for a circle. So that's 3 or 4. And that's kind of it for that initial bit of logic. I haven't got very far, I don't think. I mean, these are going to be low-ish, but... No, OK. What I'm going to do now... Ah, oh, there's roping. There's good old roping. Yes, this palindrome set. Let us colour these digits blue. What are those three digits? I don't know. You don't know. But let's call them the three blue digits. We know exactly where they appear in box four because of this palindrome. That one is there. That one is there. That one is there. So those are blue. Now, where do the three blue digits go in box one? It must now be here. And once you get one of these sets of three roped, the same must apply to the others. So uh, the way to look at it, perhaps, is the grey group of cells, which are one of the clones, must go here in box one, because they can't go in these cells, and they're not any of the blue cells, which we can tell from column one. So the grey group of cells in box four is there. The remaining white cells go yellow and we can do the same over here because we've got this. Now we know that grey is that thing, that group of three from the clone and yellow is that group of three. It is now very hard to tell which the cloned cells are. So let's just try and remember because, of, because I'm colouring the whole grid but I do want to carry on with this so I'm going to keep going. I'm just going to try and remember that those three are a clone of those three. So it's the yellows and greys in columns one and nine that are the clones. Anyway, the other three cells in column nine must be blue. So they're blue, they're blue. Now we can look at these must be yellow to make up the complement in box three, and those are yellow, and then the remaining cells are grey in column seven and eight. Now, what have we learnt from this? We've learnt that 9 is a grey digit. That's not interesting. OK, I'll tell you what we've learnt. On the palindrome, that is blue. So that's one of the blue cells. So maybe we can actually start feeding these colours into the other... Yeah, look, so in this row... We've got to have three yellow, three grey, and three blue digits because we know there are that many in the puzzle from any of the boxes on the edges. So that must be the third yellow. So I can do exactly that trick down here. Blue there, grey there because it's the same as that, and that's a yellow digit. Now, it's a bit like that puzzle the other day, the entropy puzzle, where I had to work out the three sets. we still got to work out the three sets. Ah, we now have suddenly realised we know that grey has both 7 and 9 in. So there's a 9 somewhere there, a 7 somewhere there. Let's highlight all of these cells, all of those trios, as having to have a 7 or a 9 in. Now what about the arrows? This one... Right, the minimum value for a circle that is adding two sets of two is six, isn't it? One and two there, one and two there. So that's at least six. It can't be a nine because we've got a nine there. So this circle is six, seven, or eight. And the digits on it, the biggest digit you could put on it, if you had a one, two in one of these pairs, the biggest digit you could put on it is a five. If you had one, two there, plus one, five there, Actually, that would take you to 9, wouldn't it? Yeah, the biggest... Sorry, I'm, I'm wrong. The biggest digit you can put on it is a 4, because you've got... Say you had a 1-2 pair there. These would add up to 5 at a maximum. So the only digits that can go on the arrow cells, in this box anyway... Let's come back to this box in a moment, actually. Are a 1, 2, 3 and a 4. Now, 
now we know that this nut, yeah, you can't put, well, you obviously can't put that circle value on its own arrow because you'd have to add something else. So that circle value must sit here. So that is six or eight. Um, and these are those digits replicated because of the roping. And actually, they can't include a four now because the minimum value, you'd have to repeat the four, the minimum value would be four plus one, four plus one equals ten. So, I could even fill in one, two, three, six, eight as a group here. Now, those are clones of these. So it is the same, yes, it's always the same group of yellow cells. So that one is one, two, or three, because it's not this big digit in this row. That one is also one, two, or three. That is actually on the clone. So it's the same as this cell. Now, if that's the same group, this is the six or eight, with one, two, three on the arrow. Ah, and I had this as three or four, but we now know it can't be a four. So that is a three. There's my first digit in the grid, a yellow three. It can't be a three, two pair because it would be a three, two pair everywhere and they'd add up to ten. So it's a three, one pair everywhere and one and three plus one and three is eight. So eight is the big number. Um, let's get rid of the six markings. And the smaller numbers in yellow are one and three. So I can take a lot of twos out. That's an eight to make up the region, and that works very well. In fact, nine, yes, sorry, this has been obvious for ages. We know that nine can't be there because of that six, eight, nine triple. So it's here. And we know that seven can't be there. So this one is the seven. Um, this is now not eight or three on the end of, and there was this. And they're on the palindromes. So we know blue has a four or six in it. There's a three, four, seven triple looking at that cell. I keep tempting being tempted to look at these arrows as palindromes and write one there and three there, but they're not. So I can't do that either here or here as far as I can see. Um, what else? Well, the remaining cells in row five are two, four, and five. They're on the palindromes, or in a couple of cases. That means the third grey cell is 2, 4, or 5, but in this cell it can't be a 4. So the third grey cell is 2 or 5, and the greys are made up of 9, 7, and 2 or 5. So the remaining cells in this row are 2, 5, or 6, and the 6 can't be there, so there is definitely a 6 in blue. Um, well, there's definitely a four in blue, because that four, six are a blue pair. So blue definitely have a six and a four in, as well as a two or a five. I'm beginning to feel a bit confused by the puzzle, but I think this is good progress. Now, oh, these are clones. Yes, look, eight can't be in that cell. So... Now we know where 8 goes in the clone. It's in the middle. That's here. Um, so there's an 8 somewhere in these cells, which is yellow. And is the last yellow in the row? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, getting, I'm beginning to get a bit confused. These are from 2, 4, 5, 6. That's on the palindrome. All blues are from 2, 4, 5, 6, so I'm going to fill that in here as well. Ah, but that is this end of the palindrome, isn't it? So it can't be a 4, it's 2, 5, or 6. But we don't even know there's necessarily a 4 in... Yes, we do know there's a 4 in blue. So one of those is a 4. And by the magic of palindromicity, that means one of these is a 4, and that's not. Now, can this really be a 6 or a 5? 
Oh, that's really interesting. It can be a six. If you put one, two there, you could have a nine here. But it can't be a five. You could put one, two there and add up to eight, but you can't put eight here. You can't put one, three there because of that cell. It would break it. So nine's not possible. So that's weirdly not a five. It's either two or six. It's probably two, but we don't know that for sure yet. So, blues are from two, four, five, and six. Greys are from two, five, seven, and nine. Right, this one, it can't be two, obviously. Can it be five? Could be, with a two there and a two, one pair. This one can't be five because of that. And that's on the palindrome. So 2, 7 or 9 there. Same on this end of the grid because of that 5 looking at that cell. This one can't be 2 because of the arrow. I don't know. I'm floundering around a bit, not quite getting anything done. If that was 6, 9, this would be a 1, 2 pair. You'd have 3 here. So I can't see what to do with that. Sorry, excuse me a second. No, nothing important yet. Um, oh, okay, what do we do next? What do we do next, Dylan? I mean, it's been interesting so far, but I wasn't, wasn't expecting it to get hard at this point, but it, it looks to me like it does a bit. Right, here's a, here's a nice thought. Whatever this cell is, has got to be there. Why do I think that? Well, where does this cell appear in this box? And the answer is I don't know. But I do know it doesn't appear in those cells. It's not grey or yellow, so it doesn't appear in those. And it's not this cell, because that appears here. So this cell is somewhere in this row. I'm going to give it a little flash of green. The green cell is somewhere here, so that is the blue-green in row 1. And that means that this digit is not 2 or 5. Now, it not being 2 feels quite big. This can't be 5 anymore. This is now 7 or 9. Can it be 7? If that was a 2-1 pair, it could be. Right, let's do the same down here. That 2 or 6, again, it can't be there because it's there. So it's in one of those, and this becomes 2 or 6. That is on the end of a palindrome. So this can't be 2 or can't be 5, must be 2 or 6. Now in this row, 5 is in one of those two cells and can't be here. That's on the palindrome, so 5 can't be here. And where does this appear in box 2 again? That's lovely. This cell can't be in those, and it can't be there because of the palindrome again. So that has to be in one of those. And then in row 1, it appears here, and that's 2 or 4 there. But I have not ruled out 5 out of blue. If 5 was in blue, it would go here, here, it's obviously there there. That's on the palindrome, that puts it here, then it would be here, and then it would be here, and five can be in blue. Ah! I thought I was about to reduce blue to 246, but I am not that way. Okay, okay. Here's another thought then about these cells. They've got to have a low digit on, is because, look, the, the maximum they can add up to, if that was 9 and that was 4, that's the biggest difference there. The maximum they can add up to is 5. So these are selected from 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now... Ah, they can't be a 1, 3 pair.
They can't because of that cell. They can't be a 2-4 pair because of that cell. So they've got different parities. Actually, I could have worked that out from the fact that that's odd and that's even. But they, can, they can't be 4-3 because that will add up to too many. So they're either 1-2, one, 1-4 one, or 2-3. Look, I'm going to start, let's forget the green flash, because I think I've used that. I'm going to start flashing these yellow cells, or the one and three. Am I? Don't mean to tantalise you. They're not on palindromes, though, so it's not so... Okay, I'm going to do it anyway. So let's call that one pur... Ooh, that's gone fully purple. Okay, purple, and this one... Uh, blah, 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 orange flash. So that's the orange. Yes, they're not on palindromes, but they're in clones. I'd forgotten that. That's good. So this one is purple. Now, that's in the clone. So that goes purple. That goes orange. This one is orange. I think we might learn something from this. I'm really hopeful. That's orange. Now, only one of them can be here. One of them must be here. No, yes. One of them must be here, because this can't be a 2-4 pair. So the one that must be there is purple. Is that, maybe that's not useful. Oh, this is purple. Look. Yellow, purple, yellow, purple. That is purple. Must one be on here? Not necessarily. I think this could be a... Um, oh, it could be a 2-5 pair with a 2 there to make 9, so I'm not going to go mental on that one yet. Let's let's keep... Look, I've got a 1-2-3-4 quad. That's what I've got in this row. That's weird. Okay, but it means this isn't 2 or 4, which means this isn't on the palindrome, which means... And that blue cell appears here, so that's 5 or 6. That's on the palindrome. It's it's sort of like it's about to unwind, but not quite there yet. This can't be a two because of the one, two, three, four quad. So that's on the palindrome as well. Now that's a seven, nine pair. One, three, eight, seven, nine. And this can still be two or five. Bother. Now that means this is a seven or nine on the on the clone. So that goes in there. That's definitely 7 or 9. Which one of these is 2 or 5? Ah. No, I don't know from that one. Bother. That's strange. Maybe I should know, but I don't. Now I'm going to think about these again. Oh, maybe it's about whether we can have the yellow-purple. Oh, OK. Does this need a low digit? There is a yellow-orange. Well, somewhere in those two cells, because of that. Could you keep yellow-orange over here and off here? I said they could be a 2-5 pair. Then that would be a 2 this would be a four. Blue could be a two, four, six set. Looks like it does just work. Okay, let's think about it up here then. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know which one is... Oh, hang on. Oh, gosh, look, we've got that yellow-purple. So that can't be yellow or purple. And it also can't be yellow or orange. It sees both one, three colours. So that is two or four. This is, therefore, the odd digit on this bit of the arrow. 
to make that into odd. So that's one or three, and this now is the yellow purple digit. Now, that means yellow purple is in one of those two places. And what does that mean? It's either a three there. If yellow purple is a three, that's there. If yellow purple is a one, it's here. Ah, so if this digit is a one, that's a one, this is a two. So if that digit is a one, that can't be a two. So they must not be a one, two pair. And therefore they must add up to five, and these are as separate as they can be. They are four and nine. Oh, that's really clever, Dylan. If that's intended, and I'm sure it is, that is beautiful, actually. We get a seven there, we get nine in the corner. Oh, look, we're going to get three in the corner, but I still don't know which corner at this point. Um, oh, that's clever. Um, anyway, we've got nine in that corner. That's on the clone, so that's a nine. This is now not a nine in the circle. So these are going to have to be pretty, pretty low. That can't be a six anymore, because we can't keep them low enough then. That's a two. Uh, so there's definitely a two in blue, so that's a two, that's a two, that's a two. Every set of three blue needs a two. So that's a two, that's on the palindrome, that's a two. Yes, come on, we're away now, surely. That has become a five, so every set of grey needs a five, and is indeed five, seven, nine. Um, can't I fill those in? nine five seven oh, I can't fill them in but it tells me that blue now has a four in it and a six so blue is a six four two set which I've long suspected two six four and I can fill them all in I think yes six four six that one is a four so this yellow purple flash is a one we don't get our three in the corner from that but this is a three, and that is three in the corner. Losing its religion. There we go. So we are reducing all the possibilities. Now I can finish row two. Uh, we must know that grey is now nine, five, seven. And that's a clone. Let's keep using the clones while they're available. Send in the clones, indeed. Five, seven in the circle. So these two add up to five. They must be a two and a three. We know the order. That's a seven to finish the row. That finishes this triple. That's done. Four and six. This is a two, five, eight set. Can't put those in yet. Eight, six, nine. I can do these. The one two pair, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Then we have a four, eight, five, and we're going to finish off. So let me do the colouring before we finish off. In fact, first of all, let's get rid of the flashing because uh, we've used it and it was useful. I mean, I could, by exactly the same token, get rid of all the rest of the colouring, but I'm not going to. I'm going to actually lean into that colouring and uh, colour it up. So 2, 4 and 6 are blue, 1, 3 and 8 are yellows, 9, 5 and 7 are grey, and that's going to leave us with grey here, blue here, yellow here, and therefore we can fill them in as 8, 2, 5. And I press the tick, and I put something in wrong, I've mistyped a 7, a 5 as a 7. There we go, how about that? I hope that's all I did. Yes, okay. So there we go, that's Molly Hogan, that's a nice puzzle. I enjoyed that, Dylan, that's well worth a 95% rating or more. And uh, yes, when you do come up with a 98% rating, and do go and try his puzzles on LMD if you have the time, um, I'm sure Dylan will get there in the end. Actually, let's just take out the colouring now, so... 
so that we can see the original clones and they have been fulfilled. There we go. That is Molly Hogan. Thanks for watching on Cracking the Cryptic. See you soon, I hope. Bye for now.